everybody says Rush, and I was normally I'm like, oh, I rush again, but I would have thought Neil Peart would have been one of yours. Yes, absolutely. Uh, last time I saw him, of course, he's no longer with us, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, last time I saw him, um, I went and he, and he was under his motorcycle. Under um, it? Yeah. Repairing it, or is it an accident? And I don't know. I'm not joking. No. He was changing the oil on his bike. Oh, okay. Where and did I you see him? And I walked up and went, uh, hello, Neil. You know, he said, uh, oh, uh, Slade, I'll, uh, I'll be with you in five minutes. I just got to change the soil because he was going to go straight after the show, you know, off, gone. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. We get great news, great interviews, great interviewees, and sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you smash the subscribe button, hit the like finger thing, and comment below. Before further ado, I bring to you former ACDC drummer, Chris Slade. How are you doing, Chris? Hi. Hi, everybody. I'm doing fine. Thank you. I'm uh, I'm in the UK right now. Yes, for sure. And you, you're obviously, obviously um, it's interesting. You have, you, I know you're from Australia, but I can tell the distinction. No, I'm not. I thought you were from South Wales. I'm from South Wales, yeah. The band's from Australia, of course. But isn't South Wales a uh, territory in Australia? No, that's New South, that's New oh. South Wales. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I gotcha. But um, the funny thing is um, the Aussie accent and the English accent are similar to, a, to, a, to an American. Like, I'm North American, I'm Canadian. But when we hear Aussie and uh, um, English uh, people speaking, there is a distinction between uh, the the um, the uh, accent for sure, for sure. And the same thing. I know thing with... that uh, people say that to me all the time. You're Australian, or are you English? And I say, uh, well, I'm Welsh actually. And they say, but you say mate. They say <laughs> you say mate. I say, where do you think it originated from? <laughs> Did mate originate actually in England before it went went Aussie? Like seriously? Oh yeah. Didn't know well, that. you know, a, a, a mate on a, a mate on a ship is like be just below the captain. Okay, okay. And you said you're uh, you're Welsh. Um, I interviewed not too long ago. Um, you might know him, um, Yuli, John Roth. He lives in Wales currently. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's uh, he's a good guy. Really great, great guy. So so before we start talking about um, your album that's uh, not even a month old from being released, it was, uh, uh, Timescape was released on the 19th of July, I believe. I just want to yep. um, just uh, uh, share my condolences to um, recently passed uh, Jack Russell, a great white. Um, I've had the pleasure of interviewing Jack a few yeah, times and meeting him. Yeah, to join you with that. Yeah. He was um, definitely, when you met him and spoke with him, um, I could see... Um, I think he was in pain for a long time um, from um, just certain issues that happened in his life. And, and it's, uh, it's, it's fortunate now that he's at peace, I hope. So everybody watching, um, and Jack, rest in peace, brother. You're, you're going to be missed by many. Yeah, same. Um, so let's talk about your, your, your most, your, your well known for many uh, genres of music. Like, I mean, you've worked with Asia, um, The Firm, Jimmy Page, David Gilmore, uh, Man from Man. But I think people watching my channel will know you um, most likely from your um, The Razor's Edge album. And that's one of the most commercial albums outside of ACDC's uh, Back in Black uh, that had Thunderstruck on it. Just tell the viewers that may not know how you came to be in ACDC back then, uh, around 1990. Um, I auditioned <laughs> uh, along with a hundred other people. Just before I was, just before I joined ACDC, for the year before that, I was working with Gary Moore, and uh, they um, and Gary and ACDC had the same management, a guy called Stuart Young, no uh, no relative of uh, Angus and Mal, but Young Stuart Young, and I got the chance to audition. Um, so, um, and I auditioned, I was told later that I was number 100 in the audition list. You can't, you were the last person to audition? Yep, I know I was. 
Wow. There's a story that goes along with that, but uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it's, it's quite long. Um, but you got well, the gig, anyway, obviously. Yeah, I, I, I did the audition, shall I say? Um, and in the audition, Malcolm and Angus were they put two chairs, guitar on their lap, both guitars on their laps. And uh, they were 10 feet away from the bass drum. Oh. And uh, Cliff was in one corner and Brian was in the other corner. And then it was like, uh, okay, uh, back in black. Uh, you can't in. So it's like, uh, oh, no pressure. Okay, click, 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 gang. <laughs> And that's how it started. Um, did they give you the um, Did they give you the uh, thumbs up um, right after the audition, or did you have to wait it out? Um, you know, sweating and pins and needles for a few days for the phone call. Well, I did the whole thing, right? The whole audition it was about an hour and a half, really. And uh, yeah, and they said, "Oh, well, thanks, Chris. I uh, will let you know." So I packed my gear up, put it in the car. I lived an hour away from the from the audition place, um, and on the way back, I was I was so um, cheesed off of the way I'd done it, oh, and the things I'd said and the things I'd played and how I'd played and all that. I kept just just go, going round in my head, and I got lost. So I thought I'll phone. Uh, my missus and tell her that uh, I'm going to be a bit later than I said. And um, she, of course, first thing she said was, how'd you do? I said, not very well. I'll tell her about it when I get back. So I'll go back to the house. Um, as I say, it was an hour from my house. Just got lost. Um, parked up and uh, she came up the path and Said, oh, so you did badly, did you? I said, yeah. She said, they they just called to see you got the gig. Wow. I was just going to say, okay, so you know where you live, Chris. So you're not fooling anybody. You got lost. So are you telling me you stopped at a bar and that's what you told the missus? <laughs> no, no. I, uh, I was really so preoccupied with telling myself I was an idiot for playing like oh, that. And for... Yeah. Uh, saying what I did and doing what I did and whatever, you know, just kicking myself. And uh, they called before I even got home because don't forget, no cell phones in those days. That's right. They had to call landline. Yep. So they called my landline, which is in my house. I hadn't got back yet. Um, wow. So, uh, you know, to answer your question, I knew straight after. <laughs> Uh, and you get a look at being being auditioned hundreds. I don't mean to cut you off. Um, there's a bit of a delay here. Um, but being auditioned 100 is kind of unique. If you get that spot at 100, I would think looking back, you might have a good chance of getting it because my intuition is that if a band like ACDC, Def Leppard is auditioning, if they find the guy that connects right away at say the seventh one out of 100, they might have that thing he's it we don't even need to go on with the others right because you have that chemistry so if you were at 100 i think you had a good chance um like a book you know every way you know way, i right. agree uh, when you when you record a song often it's the first take you use yeah because that's got the spontaneity yeah. um that you're after so um it can go Anyway, anyway at all. And um, I know uh, they were top drummers that tried out from top bands. And they would call up and they would say, don't tell my band, but uh, I want to audition for you guys. Just keep it quiet. Yeah. And uh, any, uh, any, of those, any of those drummers um, maybe have passed now that you can you can share who auditioned? That wanted to keep no, secret? I don't think so. I think they're all okay. extant at the moment. Okay. Okay. So we don't want to uh 
We don't want to um, jeopardize your honesty by keeping that a secret. So that's great. So before we get to this question I have about um, Zelensky, which is kind of unique, I don't want to make this a political show, but I, it's, a, it's a question I have to ask as soon as I, I saw that interview. Um, tell everybody about uh, Chris uh, Slade's timeline and the Timescape album just released. I'll put links below everybody so you can go get the album, purchase it, buy all the merch, make Chris richer than he is. But tell us about the album. Um, well, we've always recorded timeline, the Crusade timeline. I've always recorded uh, for the past 10 years. We've been together 12 years, uh, but there's always been covers. So uh, we weren't writing, any of us. Uh, I've always written lyrics or, you know, I've, I've written the odd melody, but suddenly two or three years ago, two and a half years ago, actually, I started writing melodies, and not just melodies for songs. I had bass lines and string lines and uh, guitar arpeggios. I had no idea um, I could do that. So, uh, as I say, I've been, I've been writing lyrics since the 70s in Earth Band. Um, but uh, it just, uh, just flowed, and it came pretty quickly actually i was writing things in the studio sometimes um just sit now i need a chorus there i know i'll do this and uh, i'd go and do it and it would work so uh, i was really pleased about that um and then the guys wrote a song also the band mm -hmm. and they hadn't written too many either um in the past so, you know, it was uh, like, well, let's get this down, guys. So um, that's what we did. And um, the record company wanted some ACDC. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just didn't want ACDC. I wanted, uh, as, as you know, on the album, I got a free song and uh, Uriah Heep song. And uh, I can't remember a few other bands I've worked with. Yeah. And it's... Um, the album sort of um, is a bit like our stage show, which is two hours long. Um, and half of it is ACDC and half of it, not in one lump, half of it is, um, is uh, you know, David Gilmore, Jimmy Page uh, material, Earth yeah. Band. Um, um so it sort of mirrors the this album mirrors that in a way, uh, except for you know, instead of Gilmore material and Pagey material, it's uh, our material, timeline material. So it's half and half, really. Um, first single um, is "Back for a Vengeance," right? Was that the first single? Well, I don't know about a single. It's about eight minutes long. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's an Iron Maiden song. <laughs> minutes long. Yeah, Back with the Vengeance. It's the one we have a video for. We have a yeah. live video for it on chrislade.com, actually. That'll be below um, for everybody to click on too, Chris. Say again. That'll be in the links as well to all the viewers, uh, chrislade.com. Oh, okay. Right. Well, you better put um, the Chris Slade timeline uh, on Facebook as well then, please. Put everything. Absolutely. Good. So Thank are you. you you're you're heading. Are you? When's uh? When are you gonna do a string of shows? I know you did one recently with uh. Was it girls' school? You did a, a, a um a festival. I didn't. I actually didn't see them. Um, okay. I don't know if they pulled out or what. Okay, but that was uh, the show. Oh, I'm next week. I sorry. That's next. Next weekend. Oh. That's in the south of France. Yes. That's France. That's right. And then, what do you have? Um, are you are you guys um, scheduling for a, for a run? Um, we've been working all the time. Okay. You know, a, a lot of weekends, um, and we drive everywhere in Europe. I mean, everywhere. We were in Poland three months ago, um, which is a long way from Britain, I can tell you, because we we drove every mile of it. Um, and uh, you know it was it was great, and we were in uh, Czech Republic also this year, 
and uh, south of France next weekend. Um, south south of France. Place. South of France, that's a hell hole. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's like a working vacation. Yeah, you'd think so, wouldn't you? But it's getting there. It takes about 12 hours to get there. Oh, wow. In the lorry. See, I know my you, English. In the, in the van. And yeah. uh, we got, you got to take uh, three or four hours also for the ferry. Oh, wow. So, it's a it's a hell of a lot of uh, traveling, I and promise you. Who's so you, so you know, I was in I was in Saint Tropez, by the way, which is yeah. south of France, right? Another hell hole. <laughs> we were there. Yeah, you want to see it? Well, I was there. There's a video oh, wow. on YouTube, I think, okay. of me in in Saint Tropez. Wow. I could hardly stand up because the wind and rain was so bad. Oh wow! You hit it off season. Uh, yes, it must have been, you know, it must have been like, uh, I don't know, October, November, something like that. Okay. But it was terrible weather. I, yeah. I used to, uh, I've, in the 60s, I've done a lot of work in the south of France. Oh. And it was, uh, it was really good. I used to have, it, <laughs> uh, had this place, um, to stay at the end of San Tropez Pier. <laughs> wow. With, with five other guys. I would think at the end of a pier is water. Explain. Yes, it was. Well, not quite at the end of the pier, but before you get to the pier. <laughs> but it was, it was the last, it was the last building. It oh, okay. was a hotel at the time. Well, not a oh. hotel, but uh, um, a house. And we, there were five of us, uh, we were allowed to stay there. Wow. So, uh, you know, I, sorry, that was a Jean Lapin, which is like next door to Saint Tropez. Um, uh, so, and I was there for a couple of months, actually. So, Chris, you so you're you're traveling now um, through Europe doing shows for uh, the Timescape album. Uh, who's in the band, and is everybody crammed in that van? And does everybody yes. get along? No, we hate each other. <laughs> We've been together 12 years. What do you think? That's, yeah, that's for sure. You get a divorce. Um, uh, yes, we get on. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's great. I love it because uh, it's so retro. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I don't like flying very much. I don't okay. mean I'm afraid of flying. I just don't like flying. All the security and everything you've got to go through these days. Oh yeah. Um, you got to, you know, you got to be there two hours before the flight. You've got to two hours of security. It's uh, such a waste of time. The fun yeah, cavity so... search. The fun cavity search. Oh yeah, yeah. That. Oh, well, that's a bonus. It's thrown in, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I hear you. I I don't mind flying as well, but I mean. Actually, I, I get a rush out of being in an airport. I love the vibe, the, the people coming, going, all the different cultures. But yeah, what you have to go through just to get on the airplane is just uh, insane. So who's in the band? Let everybody know and, and give your band members... Um, um, James uh, Pomford is, uh, is the guitarist. Right. Uh, who is phenomenal. Um, Mike Clark is keyboard player and second guitar, because you need two guitars to play ACDC. Yeah. Um, and uh, we have two singers. Bun Davis is the sort of ACDC rock singer, rock and roll singer. Mm -hmm. And uh, Stevie G is the, uh, he sings Earth Band and um, uh, The Firm, Page mm -hmm. and Rogers, Material, David Gilmore. Um, and uh, he also plays bass, Stevie G. So, um, you know, I know that the band is one of the best bands I've ever been in, musically. And uh, they are absolutely fantastic. And it, it's confirmed when I watch the audience's faces. Yeah. When, uh, when James Colbert starts soloing. It's wow, like, yeah. what? 
what the hell is this? I've never heard of the guy. I've never heard of the guy. Who, who is he? Who is he? You know? Um, you know, he's not David Gilmore. How could he be? He's not Jimmy Page. How could he be? He's not Angus Young. How could he be? Um, he's his own man. And he plays fantastic guitar. Awesome. People's mouths are open watching him sometimes. So, I might uh, even put a I might, I might even put a link of um, one of your live shows below so people stick around. Now, um, ACDC's uh, tour with um, Pretty Reckless. Um, have you caught one of those shows in Europe? Um, no, I haven't. I was I was gonna go, uh, but I um, unfortunately I had too much to do, like yourself today. I had uh, just too much, and I couldn't go. We could have gone. I was planned to go to the the one before this in France mm -hmm. um, because it's so easy now for us to get on the ferry and go over there, drive over there, you know, instead of getting a plane and all that. Um, and we were going to go, but unfortunately, we just couldn't at the end of the day. Wow. So uh, I would have gone. I would have loved to have gone, actually. Um, I'm still in, in uh, a good relationship with the guys, you know. And, folks, I'm not bitter that I'm no. not playing drums on right now. Uh, people say, oh, listen to that. He's, he's bitter. I am not bitter. Um, I know Matt Log, the drummer they've got now. I used to know him when, he lived in, when I lived in California. Um, and I used to go and see some friends play, and he would play with them sometimes. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a nice guy, and he's a very good drummer. So I can understand Angus wanted to try someone else. Yeah, and it's a business, too. Like, a lot of these decisions aren't, in my opinion, necessarily um, made by band members anymore, because bands like ACDC, Def Leppard, they're brands now. And it's it's million dollar, billion dollar industries, Motley Crue and that. So a lot of this, you know, just deciding on maybe a touring guitarist, touring drummer, the band members might want to bring you back, but the, the management says, okay, we got to keep the brand moving to a different generation. Let's bring in this cat. So yeah, you're right. So I I, I do believe you're not bitter. I, it's, it's, I, I would uh, I would agree with that in most cases, but not in Angus's case. Oh, you think Angus would just say "f you" and I'm making the decision? Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, fair enough. But it's um, fine now. It used to be Malcolm would make that decision. Right. Right. Okay. Um, but now it's just Angus. Unfortunately, you know, uh, Malcolm yeah. would be sorely missed. He's uh, yeah. He was such a asset. You know, he was he was ACDC. You know, people don't realize know Angus, that. I, I know Angus is the front man, and you yeah. couldn't be ACDC without Angus. But without Malcolm, you know, you you know, it's it's just not the same. He's it, um, he's uh, he was uh, a genius, a genius yeah. guitarist, um, and uh, you know, driving force of the band. Yeah, um, he, he was the glue. Definitely. Uh, he never sped up. He was always in time, uh, always driving forward without speeding up, which is a trick in itself. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, the best I ever worked with. Wow. Best rhythm player I have ever worked with, and I've worked with a few. Yeah. Um, so I know what I'm talking about. I believe you. <laughs> so... Yeah, we know you're not better, buddy. I got a question for you. Okay, on that CNN interview with that uh, unattractive woman, I'm just kidding. Anyways, they interviewed Vladimir Zelensky, the leader of Ukraine, and he was walking, I don't know where they're walking, at some ranch it looked like, and she was asking him, um, so how do you put up you know, with the pressure of um, you know, being um, responsible for your country with all this going on around and he says in his, uh, I think it's a Ukrainian um, accent, uh, um, well, I'd like to listen to uh, my, my bands when I'm exercising, like, and then he says, like, ACDC, and it sounded to me, honestly, like it was prepared, but when you, when you heard that, what did you think? Do you think he was being legit? 
to get public support for certain Western generations? Or how did yeah. you take that? Well, um, no, I I always thought he was cool anyway, but I didn't know he had such great taste in music. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, but if you notice on that clip also, he mentions, you know, he, he sort of thinks for a second and goes, oh, yeah, uh, Eric Clapton also, and people like that. <laughs> he didn't want to offend anybody, you know. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, there's, there's too many to name, but maybe he started at the beginning of the alphabet. ACDC? Ah, uh, no, I think it's probably genuine because no, 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 you no. know he was a stand-up comedian before uh, he became president of Ukraine. You know, yeah, he's a so he's guy. in show, he's in show business. Yeah. Why shouldn't he like ACDC? Um, yeah. they're a great band. No, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so before I let you go, my friend, you've been very generous. I don't want to forget John Lappin. Thank you very much for the initial. Um, suggestion I interview uh, Chris at the time, as I said to you, John, I was too busy. But then when I freed up some time, I talked, I I, I forgot to, I actually went to your website and then I got a hold of your webmaster, Sean. Thanks, Sean. Oh, yeah. Sean got me the link. Another Canadian. Yes, yes. So I'd like <laughs> to thank both of them for um, hooking me up with you. It was a pleasure. Um, I've got a couple cliche questions. John's um, a good guy. John's a great guy. He's a great, actually, I'm interviewing uh, one of um, his new prodigies, Dominic Corto, on Monday. Um, who, what was I going to say? Oh, just the other day I interviewed, uh, uh, what the, I can't even think right now. Oh, um, Steelheart's um, Mateovic, singer from Steelheart, uh, Milenko. Mil Mil I'm going to ask him the question, and I, guess, I hope you get it right away. What's the opposite of unsubscribe, Chris? What's the opposite? Yeah. Subscribed? Yes. Subscribe to this channel uh, for these great interviews or these great interviewees. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Milienko didn't get it. He was telling everybody to subscribe to his stuff. And I'm like, I want everybody to subscribe to his stuff too. But it's a cliche thing I always do. And it's quite funny. And could you name a couple of Canadian uh, favorite influences or artists of yours, uh, Chris? Uh, well, my son... And his family live in in Canada. <laughs> My son Callum, so um, in in Calgary. So okay. you know, Callum of Calgary. He's he's one of my favorite Canadian artists. <laughs> okay, let's get out of the family. Come on, we got more than. Um, I'm pretty sure you're a fan of I, Rush. I tell you what, though, I I have a I would just want to tell the uh, the folks out there. Um, if you're trying to decide uh, which one of us is which, um, I'm the bald one. <laughs> and and well, you're the bald and good looking one. Uh, I'm, yes, yes. I'm the I homer. forgot to mention that. I didn't want to in front of you, of course. Oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. I get it all the time. So, favorite Canadian musical artist would be. Uh, can't I think of one at the moment. Isn't it I... terrible? It's, when it you put terrible. on the spot, you cannot think. Everybody says Rush, and I was normally I'm like, oh, I rush again, but I would have thought Neil Peart would have been one of yours. Yes, absolutely. Uh, last time I saw him, of course, he's no longer with us, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, last time I saw him, um, I went there and he, and he was under his motorcycle. Under um, it? Yeah. Repairing it, or is it an accident? And I don't know. I'm not joking. No. He was changing the oil on his bike. Oh, okay. Where and did I you walked see him? up and went, uh, hello, Neil. You know, he said, uh, oh, uh, Slade, I'll uh, I'll be with you in five minutes. I just got to change the soil. Because he was going to go straight after the show, you know, off, gone. His, Tell us that story. Symbol, where, where was that? Where was this at? Uh, it was in the States. and I, It was in Orange County somewhere. I can't remember the name wow. of the venue. Oh. In California, um, so he was riding his uh, his bike from show to show, like um, because they were maybe close by. Is that what was happening? He did sometimes, wow. um, but his symbols are going like this uh, from the last song on the stage, and he'd already be gone. Are you kidding me? So he would hit the last uh, symbol, and then he'd be uh, getting his bike and tuned up to run. Literally to, to run. Wow. 
See, that's a great story. <laughs> that's a unique story. Uh, with that, Chris, I'd like to thank you so much. Uh, you've been a pleasure. I'll put all the links below. I'll probably have the interview up in the next 48 hours. I'll send it to uh, to Sean and John uh, to get to you to, to share. And uh, it was it was a great uh, time talking to you, my friend. And also my Christine. Yes, Christine. Yes, uh, she, she's <laughs> as well. I'll send it to all three. So thanks so That's great. to you all. All right, Chris. Thank have you a very great much. day, my friend. Yeah. Lovely talking to you. You too. Cheers. Bye for now. Bye-bye.